ask you something. Oh. You are back to school tomorrow, aren't you? Don't, Jane. <laughs> After five years, five, six years, yeah. Of my, homeschooling. My daughter's going back to school. Yeah. That must be really nerve-wracking. It is. Both it's really nerve-wracking, especially when you work out what time you have to set the alarm in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, I bet you're more nervous than her, aren't I, you? I am, I am. No, I mean, it's like any big changes that your kids go through, it's almost like... We were talking about this this morning, Jane, weren't we, about in another, um, in another way, about if we could, if we could just get inside our child's bodies and do yeah. things. For, it's like that. I really do mm. feel like that. You hit the nail on the head when you said that this morning. Yeah. If only I could just do, like, the first few days. Yeah, but, school yeah. is so different now to when we were at school. Like we, we don't know what it's actually like to go to school right now. No. Because of course we, yeah, we aren't that age, and yeah. so we keep projecting what we went through. Yeah, and I think it and it's so different. It's so different. And I, you're a blended family, well, aren't you? What's yours? Exactly. We've got three. Uh, we've got a 19-year-old and two 16-year-olds, and and so Sam, um, my stepson, he's a, an apprentice. He chose not to do the university route, uh -huh. and this new world of apprenticeships, which we are. So surprisingly happy about because yeah. we didn't think it would be what we would choose, but it's been great for him. And then Poppy's doing A levels, and Noah's chosen not to do A levels and to do a, a diploma, extended diploma at college, which is again. And he's very, he's very brilliant academically. So I'll say that. <laughs> I'm going to say that because he is, isn't he? he so he's, yeah, he, he, you know, they've all done us so proud and done us well. But he, he loves his sport and he wants to do this sports diploma, and we've all been a bit like, what is that? Are you sure yeah. that's a, a th real thing? And of course, we have to accept that passion versus profession is a new conversation. And I do feel like if I look back, I wasn't particularly academic. I'd have loved to have done a course which is hands on and practical yeah. and teaching me on the job so soon. But lots of people didn't get well, that. Well, it's opportunity. interesting because you were saying earlier, weren't you, that e maybe even if you'd gone to drama school, oh, yeah. rather than finding your your route round, you you don't think you'd have done as well. No, I wouldn't. I know from listening to friends of mine who went to drama school, I couldn't have coped. That level of competition and fierceness and that kind of hunger. I think if you don't, I think you're told all this. A friend of mine, Joe, one of my mates, said when she went to drama school, the teacher said to them in the first week. 2% of you will make it, <laughs> and that's it. You know, they're not great odds, are they? So I don't think I would have managed to get here today had I not done it my own little special way. It's, it's scary, isn't you it? You say that, because you yeah. say you didn't want... But I did want to go to performing arts school, but I wasn't allowed to go to performing oh, right. arts school. So it was a, a flip. I had to, I, well, I was told that I had to go and get an office job, which I'm very grateful of. I'm, I, as I've said before, a very successful accounts payable um, job for many, many That's years. That's an amazing skill. And it's nice that I can still go back and do it if something doesn't come through or, you know, cos obviously being in that industry, you're self-employed and everything. But, I'm, you know, with, with, with regards to Noel, I think that that's really nice that he wants to follow his passion. And, again, I can relate to that with my son following his passion and, yeah. you know, thinking, well, that's your dream, follow your dream and, and you will come, come out right and come out successful. Well, you very... He's probably one of the 2% that you're talking about. I mean, Jamal's made a phenomenal success of it, but, you know, I, I was reading quite recently before COVID in a primary school to, to young boys, and whenever I said to them, what do you want to do when you leave school, they all said, I want to be a YouTuber. Mm. And I remember thinking, yeah, but actually some of you might have what it takes to, you know, because it's not easy to build up that kind of reputation, that kind of following, and not all of them will have that. And then, you know, it's difficult for parents because, you do want your child to have what you just described, which is your account's basis mm. to fall back on. But then also, if they have a passion, you want them... So, I mean, I, for example, was a very unusual 11-year-old. I absolutely knew from that age I wanted to be a journalist. Mm. And I went to a state grammar school where they said, well, obviously, you'll be going to university. And I said, no, I'm not. Mm. I'm going to go to journalism college and I'm going to get on a weekly paper and I'm going to yeah. go and do it that way, yeah. which I did. But, you know, not everybody has yeah. that kind of passion and focus and at that age. Like everything vision. else is... I mean, is there anything that's easy? Is there any bit that you get to where you just know? It's so difficult make helping your kids yeah. make decisions. It gets yeah. harder and harder. I wanted and to harder. ask you, because, um, you know, I know that you've been homeschooling for a, uh, a very long time. Yeah. Is it your decision for your daughter to go back to school or is it uh, hers? We've always said all the way along, if you feel ready, shown them different schools. We've always been... We are not anti-school for 
90% of children's school is the best place. So we've always kept open. And then she discovered the right school for her through mm. somebody else we know going there, and it's more arts-based school. It's, it's a state school, you know. And so she just watched them. She made her own decision. Then we just... That's what we try and do. We try and, like, guide... What I do hope now with schools, because we've talked about this a lot, you know, yeah. uh, Ken Robinson's talk oh, on TED oh, Talks. Oh, God, we love him. Do God. schools kill creativity? creativity. And I saw a kid wearing a, a T-shirt the other day and it said, creatives are the new athletes. Oh, And yes. I thought, actually, you know what? I think now people are starting to cotton on to the fact that I, I think you're creativity so right. is... Creativity is, a, is the new black. Yeah. In many senses, because our, our parents' generation they were all about professions, you know, my mum and dad yeah. are professionals, my dad's a doctor, he's waiting for somebody in the family to become a doctor. <laughs> Literally, every phone calls, like anyone... my dad, we need an engineer! We need, yeah, and they believe <laughs> in the, you know, having these hugely, you know, technical and expertise professions, whereas there's this world of creativity mm -hmm. that we're urging our children to do, and maybe there'll be less... <laughs> doctors and engineers <laughs> as a result of it. But that's... The balance has to be addressed. And you're yeah. right, that T-shirt says it all, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, it was, I loved yeah. it. But um, So you're back there tomorrow. <laughs> have you had your Botox? Ooh. What? Am I supposed to have Botox? Oh, have you not... Uh, so there's <laughs> I didn't a, know this! <laughs> there's a big spread in one of the papers all right. today. Look, here. Um, they they found coming. these women who said they can't face the new term without a face full of Botox, cos they feel the competition at the school gate. I want to know what the postcode is of those women. Stop it We can now. imagine the postcodes, can't we? Bit of Chelsea, <laughs> bit of Knightsbridge. Stop it. I've heard of red, <laughs> red carpet ready, but school gate Got to be lucky for brushing my teeth. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I wear a hoodie with a, with a hood, deliberately. Yeah, I just drive up and kick them out. That's what <laughs> I used to do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah, like, you don't even bother stopping. <laughs> 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 Gone. Well, but of course, years ago, my kids did go to a private school, and that competition is real. It is real. It's not. It's not a joke, is yeah, it? But it's that, only that... real if you enable it yeah. in your own head. I don't yeah, that's you being Jane. Sometimes we can't disable you're, you're, it. You're school, the school is for your child. What are you having to doll yourself? Yeah. Who are you going to find at the school gates? Yeah. Who's hanging around for a date at the school it, gates? Exactly. You know what I mean? You're a wrong one. <laughs> I don't even think it's about dating. I think it's about the other women at the school gates. <laughs> that's certainly what that piece is about today, is about women feeling that they've yeah. got to live up to the expectation of yeah. other women who might turn up looking amazing. I mean... Parenting is a highly competitive thing. That's why, in some ways, I pull back from it. Mm. I always say, when they're younger, it's all fine. We talk about everything we share. All the, did they? Did they? How's your potty training? What did they? Want? And as they get older, our children start to become a reflection of us and maybe what we're like. And ego comes into it more, and then fear comes into it more, and then everybody's acting that everything's fine. Yeah. And I think actually, as you as your children get older, it can get quite lonely as a parent because you stop confiding when things go wrong. So I always try and do that. I always try and be really open and not say everything is fantastic all the time. Mm. And I think that's that part of that. Yeah. Let's just... This facade, this fake facade that actually causes you far more misery than if you say, do you know what, I'm completely overwhelmed and sometimes my kid is a... <clears throat> Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. that he's well, not always perfect. Finding, but competitiveness at school is yeah. funny, isn't it? Because I'm thinking back now to... You know, a lot of schools have this teddy... Yeah. And then in the, like the class teddy, the mascot, and then you get given it to take on holiday with you or whatever. And I remember this teddy at Grace's, in Grace's class. It came back once, it had a little photo album, and it was like, here's Teddy at the Taj Mahal. <laughs> and this photo album came back, and I was thinking, well, we're not going to the Taj Mahal. You know, where can we take Teddy? <laughs> and we ended up, like, going and doing all these amazing things around London just to be able to go, look, Teddy's oh. having a wonderful time. Well, I remember Because I didn't want it to go picture. back and go, here's Teddy on the sofa watching Netflix, you know? <laughs> yeah, we all here's Teddy, had Teddy helping with the washing up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad Teddy days are gone.